What's going on, everybody? My name is Kyle O'Grady. My trail name is Narnar, and this is Trail Tales, the podcast where every single week I, a through hiker, a peak bagger, a huge hiking nerd, chat with other through hikers and peak baggers and hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. Folks, this is a huge episode. Darwin on the trail is the guest this week, which is so amazing. We talk about his upcoming Arizona trail film called Through the Great Southwest. We talk about his media company called The Outdoor Evolution. And make sure you listen all the way until the end of the episode because Darwin tells a story which might be my favorite end of episode story that's been told so far on Trail Tales, which is really really cool and it was just uh it was such a pleasure darwin when you hear this dude thank you so so much and i would love to do it again soon if this is your first time listening to trail tales well first of all welcome and second of all i hope you enjoy the episode and if you do there are 59 other episodes that you can go back and listen to now i've had a number of other hiking youtubers on including ibtat syntax 77 frozen from outdoor adventures just to name a few and then of course i've had plenty of other guests on that have done amazing things on the trail just like all of those folks except they just don't have cameras and so if you want to hear about some more crazy adventures from other hikers and you want to learn about some trails that you can through hike that you might not have heard of before i encourage you to go check out some of the older episodes and i also encourage you to follow trail tales on instagram at trail tales pod is where you can go do that facebook trail tales on facebook is a thing as well trail tales pod.com is the website where you can go listen to all of those older episodes and my youtube channel which i actually refer to a couple times in this interview kyle hates hiking on youtube my channel is still pretty small but i gained a new subscriber recently and that subscriber was darwin on the trail himself which was that, that was a pretty cool notification i uh, i saw flash up on my screen there so yeah Kyle Hates Hiking on YouTube. I will leave a link to that in the show notes. With that said, folks, I think we're going to keep this intro short and get into the episode. It was so much fun talking to Darwin. My only regret is that I didn't make a joke about how my name could be Narwin on the trail. Get it? Because, like, my trail name is Narnar. Narwin. Honestly, it's it's probably good I, I didn't make that joke. So, yeah, let's... God, let's get into the episode. Let's do it. My conversation with Darwin on the trail. What's going on, man? This is a this is a pretty big accomplishment for uh, Trail Tales. I'm pretty stoked oh, yeah. about this. Nice, yeah, me too, man. Thanks for having me, dude. No problem. Like I was saying um, when we talked on Monday, it's like when I was first starting or not even starting when i was first like envisioning this podcast when i was still on my appalachian trail through hike in 2018 i was like okay well who can i get for guests and like obviously the first people that came to mind were like my friends and and the people that i like know personally that are hikers and then after that i was kind of like well who else and and the obvious like answer there if you're someone who pays attention to like hiking social media and youtube and all this stuff are like the you know the the popular YouTubers yourself and 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 Dixie and a bunch of other people and so I I I kind of always had that idea in the back of my head right and it was always just kind of like okay well that's like like way off in the future like if I even like start this podcast if I even you know make a bunch of episodes and feel like I'm ready to interview s- somebody like that then maybe I'll get there and the fact that we're doing this right now and I am not nervous at all and I'm just super stoked about it is a uh, is pretty cool, man. So yeah, dude, yeah. I'm I'm very very excited. Well, thanks for having me. But uh, you know, you, you can't call me a YouTuber. I don't I don't I don't dig the term YouTuber, man. Did I call you? And that's the thing. <laughs> I, I listen <laughs> I listen to your podcast with Emery. So everybody listening, by the way, you should go check out um Emery uh, Byland podcast. Uh, he was a, a guest on the show not too long ago. Yeah, actually, and um he did an interview with Darwin. Uh, I want to say it probably came out like a month ago now, maybe a month and a half ago, yeah, something yeah, like I think, that. I think, yeah, I think about then. 
And I almost want to... I don't want to say this is going to be, like, part two of that, because fucking Emery is way better at this stuff than I am, but, like, you know, this is this is going to be, like, a, an extension almost. I'm going to try to um, kind of build off of that conversation. So everybody should go check that out. I'll probably throw it in the show notes as well. Um, and in that interview, Darwin said he did not like to be referred to as a YouTuber. And well, <laughs> you know, I, I don't really... I, I just don't identify. I mean, obviously, you know, by, I guess, by definition, since I am a person that does something on YouTube, I guess that would technically make me a YouTuber. But do you feel like there's like a negative, like, attachment to that term? Like, I'm, I'm just curious why you don't like to be referred to as a YouTuber. Because as someone who's like starting YouTube... And yeah. maybe as like a younger person, I'm not that much younger, but you know, like I feel like the term YouTuber is like pretty positive. So I'm just kind of curious yeah, about that. Yeah, I don't know. I think whenever I think of YouTuber, I think of like... Um, Logan Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like PewDiePie or something. And like, that's not what I do, right? Like I'm, I'm just a hiker. I'm just, I'm just a guy who talks about gear every once in a while. And I just happen to do it with a camera. And, you know, obviously the place that... I happen to use to post that media is YouTube. So I guess in all fairness, technically I'm a YouTuber, but I've never been one that's been big on labels. I, mm -hmm. I just, I don't dig labels. You know, a lot of people want to say like, oh, like, so you're a photographer. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not a photographer at all. Well, don't you take <laughs> photos? Yeah, but I would never consider myself a photographer. Same with videographer or filmmaker or, or you know, any of those labels. I, I don't know. I've just never been one... I guess I've just never been one for labels. I'm a very non-conformist, sir. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, well yeah. what are you then, Darwin? If you if you had to pick a label in terms of all this all this stuff that you've created, yeah. or even just as a hiker, like what would that you label just, be? You just said it. Like I, I think any. See, yeah, I kind of knew the answer to that question. Yeah, but I, I, I think wanted if, to get if it you out know, there. if I'm going to own up to anything, I think it's being a creator, and I think. I think that we're all creators. I think that human beings um, in general are creators. You know, everything that we're, we're doing right now, the, the mic that we're talking into, the, the computer, uh, the, the Wi-Fi connection that we're using to have this conversation, it was all created by somebody and it didn't exist before and they put it out into the world. And that's, that's kind of like a big thing for me, uh, no matter what I'm doing. I've owned, I owned a restaurant in the past, um, you know, created food for people. I owned a recording studio for a while. Um, you know, I, I created music. So I've, I've always, I think if I was going to identify as anything, it would be a creator over anything else. Just because I don't like putting myself in a, a box. I know a lot of other people do, um, but uh, I don't look at it that way. I've never really thought of it that way. It's interesting, man. That's interesting. Yeah. Real quick, because you just, you mentioned this during Emery's podcast as well. Um, yeah. What kind of music were you playing? Playing or... Or recording and producing. Well, I, I'm, I'm assuming you were you were a musician as well as a, yeah, a producer. Yeah. So, so. so growing up um, in high school, I was actually in a punk band. I played lead guitar in a punk band. Okay, what kind and of punk then, here? Because I am someone who listens oh, to like some of that stuff, so I'm just kind of um, curious. It was a little bit of dirt punk, but a little bit, you know, a little metal kind of style mixed in. I'm, I'm trying to think of something to compare it to. Um yeah, I honestly can't think of the sound to compare it to. It was definitely like trash punk. It was very garage rock. Um, nothing sophisticated. It wasn't political or anything. Not not that type of punk. Gotcha. But, uh, but, you know, we played a lot of punk clubs. I, I would say, that if anything, uh, I guess we, we had a little bit more emphasis on metal. Uh, just because we all kind of came from a little bit of a metal background growing up listening Dude, that's, to metal. You never struck um, me as a metalhead. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big audiophile. I have been my entire life growing up. My dad used to own a, um, a restaurant, a bar and a restaurant, and it was a, a blues bar, a blues and jazz bar. So I grew up as a kid listening to jazz and blues my entire life. Um, and then, you know, getting a little bit older when I started getting into skateboarding and stuff like that, that's whenever the punk and the metal kind of started to come into my life. And yeah, I'm, I'm a super, super, like, I think, you know, I, I've heard other people talk about it. Like, you know, what are your top five songs on your, uh, on your iPhones, uh, Spotify, iTunes playlist? Spotify yeah, or, rap or, or whatever. I, I'm, not, I'm not a Spotify guy, but, <laughs> um, I think that it would confuse most people because I'm crazy eclectic when it comes to music. I will literally listen to just about anything just because, I don't know, I, I find even even music that I wouldn't 100% identify with, um, I have a lot of respect for because I think, again, it kind of wraps around to what I said before. It, you know, somebody creating something and putting it into the world and that thing um, 
influencing someone or inspiring someone, I think is amazing, no matter how you're doing it. Um, if you're reaching one person, you know, like I'm don't want a hardcore name drop or call somebody's favorite band out, but <laughs> ICP is a really good example, right? Insane Clown Posse. I'm <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> I, I, I could care less about it. it. It annoys me. But at the same token, I respect the hell out of those guys because, I mean, look what they've done. Like it might be goofy to me and it might be goofy to somebody else or maybe even offensive, but they've created their own subculture. There's people that like literally get married and like <laughs> clown makeup. I've never understood <laughs> that shit, I'm dude. I've I mean, never understood that. So, so <laughs> with so that funny. with that point being made, like I respect anybody that's putting themselves out there and kind of like taking that risk of creating something and putting it into the world. So, and that's where... You know, I'm I'm a massive music fan of just about anything. I, I think I can find a little joy in everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so yeah, definitely metalhead, uh, big hip hop fan. Um, I don't like a lot of like the you know hardcore gangster rap or any of the new like mumble rap, but love some like classic hip hop. Uh, really into Run the Jewels. Um, love those dudes. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty crazy eclectic music fan i think dude. this is the first time anyone's asked me about my music dude taste, i was so. like i said I, I, when i was listening to your conversation with emory i was just kind of curious about it because like i'm i'm I, I love music as well i I, yeah. I wouldn't call myself a musician but i i dabble with guitar a little bit i can play like a couple chords and, and stuff yeah, yeah. like that so you know I'm, I'm really into it and honestly um music like played a pretty big role in my through hike honestly um and, and it has in my life for for years and years now just like I get nostalgic, right? So, for instance, oh, literally dude, just today same. I was listening to an album that uh, came out on my through hike towards the end of my through hike. Nice. And as what soon as I heard that, it's an album called Proper Dose by The Story So Far, like a pop punk, like punk band. Okay, okay. And um, as soon as I heard that first track, I was like, I remember exact. I was sitting in the uh, hostel absolutely. in Monson when I first heard this song, and I listened to it all throughout the so, hundred mile wilderness. So. I- so. If, if, if you listen to music that way, I think that, I mean, that would make you an audiophile because that's how I listen to music. Like I make a connection with, um, I, I used to be a big from when I was a kid up until five years ago when I went off to do the AT, um, I was a massive record collector. Um, when I was a kid, my mom was really into vinyl. So I used to go to uh, flea markets and thrift stores digging for records with her. When I was a little kid, she was a, a catalog collector. So she she collected file. Do you know what that means? Like you collect. Not um, really. <laughs> so so records all, and it's how I collected too. Records have a, or did for a long time, a catalog number. So you have like a record company like Atlantic or um, Island. And, you know, the first record that that company ever produced and put out or released is 00001. <laughs> and then the next record is 00002. So catalog collectors will collect by serial number so like i collected a lot of deca um so you're familiar with the who obviously yeah Um, yeah yeah, so the who was on deca so um so i collected a lot of who but i also collected everything around who so if like you know the album quadrophenia by the who was like one two five eight like i wanted to have one two five nine from deca even though it wasn't uh, even though it wasn't the who. So I was a, I was a big catalog collector. <laughs> so, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is how I connect to music is exactly what you're talking about. I know whenever I hear a song, um, I get nostalgic because I can remember what record it came off of, where I was at when I bought or found the record, um, how much I paid for it, uh, what I was going <laughs> through, um, yeah, which is really wild. So I think like, you know, connecting music like that, that I've always been a big thing. And if you if you collect and you listen to music that way, I think you're an audiophile, audiophile sir. Yeah, man. Well, shit, I learned something about myself today. Yeah. That's, uh, that's good. <laughs> Let me ask you this. While we're, yeah. again, while we're talking about music here, um, you hear people make the argument, and, you know, I, I understand this argument that like, oh, you should listen to the nature the sounds whatever I, actually let me yeah, rephrase yeah. That. i don't think people are saying that you should do that but like that they personally prefer to do that right so sure, sure. do you oh, listen yeah, to all the time. yeah do, do you listen to a lot of music while you hike um do you like try if you do do you like try to take breaks from it sometimes or are you just like you know just whatever yeah, so, you feel like so i listen 
I, I listen to tunes while I hike all the time. Um, so usually like when I was on the PCT on in 2018, I kind of made a deal with myself that in the morning when I got up and started hiking, I wouldn't listen to anything until 5 a.m. or not 5 a.m., 9 a.m. So I usually get up around 5, start hiking by 6, and then I would have about three hours where I didn't listen to anything so I could just kind of be in my own head, um, which you know can be dangerous when you're doing a through hike. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, I'd try to get in my own head and kind of have some thoughts, work some stuff out. Uh, a lot of the projects that I'm doing this year came out of that time on the PCT when I was really trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. Um, but then like from nine, basically to the end of the day, I stopped hiking. Yeah, I listen to tunes. Um, and a lot of that is reflective of the media that I make. So if you watch any of my videos, you'll notice I use a lot of very ambient type music. Um, I'm a massive post-rock fan. So bands like Cigarose, uh, Explosions in the Sky, This Will Destroy You. Um, I listen to a lot of that type of stuff. And for me, and you know, it, a lot of it can come from being an audiophile and listening to music in kind of a different way. It actually enhances my experience, right? Because whenever you whenever you hear the right music, especially something like the stuff I listen to a lot post-rock, um, it's very atmospheric, right? So when you're out there and you're looking at a tree or you're looking at this amazing sunset, um, it kind of, it, it brings you into that world a little bit. It's at least how I feel. So yeah, yeah man. music is a very vital part of, of my, my hiking routine. 100%. Very Dude, important. I'm the same way, especially when I'm doing like a longer hike as well. You know, if I'm just going out for a day hike, I generally won't, but yeah, on a, on a, on a through hike or any sort of backpacking trip, absolutely got to have the music in. And, and I don't yeah. know, like I, like I, like I said a, a second ago, I get why people, some people don't like to listen to music while they're hiking. Like I get yeah. that they want to just kind of take everything in, but at the same time, I feel like people who make that argument m might not realize that listening to music isn't always a distraction to the hike. It can no. honestly be like an enhancement well, to the hike, you know? You know, another thing that, that I've realized over five years of like doing media and obviously like putting myself out there and getting a lot of feedback from people, whether it's good or bad is a lot of people, I think that, you know, make comments like that or one of my personal favorite comments like why don't you stop and smell the roses oh yeah <laughs> I think people, and i think that people that that make those assessments or, or think that or think that maybe like someone doing you know big mile days or eating a certain food or listening to music whatever it is um have never experienced something like a through hike or any long distance hike where you know the reality of it is as you know like it's amazing it's amazing to be out there but a lot of times it's mundane as hell mm -hmm. like it, you're just doing the same thing every single day every hour for months and i don't care what you do like if you do it every day <laughs> for months <laughs> It gets boring. It just yeah, does. Man. So doing something like listening to music or doing something like challenging yourself to hike like, you know, 40 something miles in a day or one of those goofy like McDonald's challenges or something <laughs> like that. Like it's it's kind of livening it up. It's, it's spicing up that mundane thing. Exactly. So, yeah. I think that's a big part of long distance hiking. I think any long distance hiker kind of could probably, you know, relate to that, that yeah, something like music is vital because you stay in your head long enough, man. Think bad things are bound to happen. <laughs> yeah, as much as it so, as much as it sucks to say, it's it's definitely true. Yeah, yeah, it's just part of it. Well, Darwin, if you don't consider yourself a YouTuber, or, or excuse yeah. me, you don't refer to yourself as a YouTuber. I don't refer to myself as a YouTuber. Yeah. Do or, or will you shortly be referring to yourself as a filmmaker? Because dude, we got to talk <laughs> about this AZT film that's coming out soon. Um, I don't know. Like when I think of a filmmaker, I think of like Martin Scorsese, Quentin <laughs> Tarantino, like, um, I'd put you on that level. I don't know. No, don't put me on that level. <laughs> Good Lord. Don't put me on that level. Um, uh, so no, I mean, I, I just think again, like, you know, this is, I'm, I'm making a film. I've, I'm in the process of finishing and making a film and I want to continue to make films, but I don't know if I would still like classify myself as a as a filmmaker you know like martin scorsese is a filmmaker right he <laughs> makes films that's all he does he just makes films i'm sure he's a great husband and a great father and you know a good friend but he is a filmmaker that's what defines him where myself you know 
um, I'm a hiker. I'm, uh, you know, a, a, a filmmaker. I guess I'm a YouTuber, if you want to put that in there. I'm oh, a, did I just get you to it? Yeah, it? yeah, you did. Um, <laughs> so all the people so, that were like, this Kyle guy just insulted Darwin at the start of the <laughs> episode. That's right. <laughs> um, so, so no, that I, and I guess that right there is why I don't, I don't really like adopt labels because like, I don't want to just be one thing. I, my, my whole trail name, uh, Darwin all comes from like the fact that, I mean, I'm only 34 years old. I've had probably 20 something jobs, multiple careers. Um, I've dabbled in just about everything like on the art side. Um, I even was going to at one time open a screen printing business where I screen printed <laughs> concert posters. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no joke. <laughs> I owned all the equipment. I was actually doing it for a while. Jesus. Um, so like I constantly like to learn new things and constantly try to, I don't, I don't ever, I, I tell people all the time, I, I don't ever want to per, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't, I don't ever want to master anything ever. I, I want to constantly keep learning because I think like once you master something, you kind of hit the ceiling and then myself, once I figure something out, I kind of get bored with it. I'm kind of mm. like, all right, well, time to go learn something new. And I don't ever want to do that with like the things that I'm passionate about, like with long distance hiking, with, you know, uh, making films with, with taking photos. I don't ever want to reach that point where I'm just like, eh, I'm done with this. This isn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's, I guess that's the long answer to why I don't like taking the labels because that puts myself in a box and I hate being in boxes. I hate it. I can't stand it. So, <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> dude, so I'm, I'm sure that's not too deep. <laughs> oh, dude, it is, it is not deep enough. I've got a feeling that this entire episode is going to be deep, but I do, I do want to take it back. Just, just, just a, a step. Yeah. The a film. Step. Sure. Yeah. The film. I want to, I want, I want you to give like the, uh, the overview of this film. I'm sure most people listening, like at least have somewhat of an idea. I'm sure a lot I of hope, people also know pretty much everything that you're about to say, but just for those that might not be as familiar, why don't you just give an overview? Yeah. Give an overview of what this, uh, what this film is. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I've spent the last five years of my life and accidentally it was never planned, um, telling my story to people, you know, whether it's my opinion or my, my hikes or my photography or videography or whatever. I've been telling my story for five years. I've been literally once a week putting my face on a camera and telling people my story, no matter what it is. And I kind of got to a point when I was on the PCT in 2018, where I thought a lot about that and I thought about kind of what we were talking about, like, oh, I'm starting to hit the ceiling. Like I'm starting to get to that point of like where I know how to do this. Like I know how to talk to people about gear. I know how to make a trail video. I know how to, I know how to do all these things within the culture that I really love, which is the long distance hiking community. Um, and I don't want to hit this. I don't want to get to the point to where I, I get burnt out. I don't want to get to that point where it's not fun anymore. It doesn't inspire me. So like I do with everything, I decided to go left field. And I was like, you know what? No, I know how to use a camera now. I, I've made connections with with trail communities and trail associations. I have a passion for film. I love telling stories. I'm a storyteller, just whether it's my, my own story or someone else's. So I decided to take this platform that I've somehow built from all you crazy people that want to watch me talk about <laughs> backpacks um, and use that for good and use it to kind of amplify someone else's voice and someone else's story. So I made the decision that I wanted to go out and shoot a documentary film about a community, about an association. And I racked my brain for a little bit trying to figure out what I want to do that on. And, you know, I love the AT, I love the PCT, but my God, there's so many of those, right? Like we've all heard those stories. Of course. Especially if you're in the hiking community. Um, but there's this trail that back in 2016, I went out to bike pack um, for the first time and stepped foot or I guess wheel on it, um, which was the Arizona Trail. And on that trail, I discovered a lot of things about myself. Uh, you know, I, I tell people all the time, every time I do a hike, I do it for a different reason. And every time that I'm on a trail, I get something new out of it. And one of the things that happened when I was on the trail in 16, 
on the AZT was I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I had the YouTube channel, but I was kind of burnt out from hiking, to be to be honest. I just got off the AT in July. Um, I went out there in October. I was ready to not hike. I was ready just to be on a bike and do something different. And my YouTube channel almost went a completely different direction. I was wanting to make bike media. I didn't want to make hiking media. Really? Talk about hiking. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you go back to 2016 and look at those videos, you'll find a bunch of videos about bikepacking. At the time, I was like, hey, nobody's really making videos about bikepacking. Nobody's really making any videos about the Arizona Trail, this kind of untapped trail. I'm going to go out and make a bunch of media because um, I've, I've always been into cycling ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I was out on the trail. I was in the Grand Canyon. And whenever you do the canyon, sorry, this is a long format answer to your question. It's all good, um, man. Long <laughs> format podcast. Um, when I was in the canyon... You can't, wheels can't touch the ground in the Grand Canyon. So you have one of two options. If you're riding it, you can either have your bike shuttled uh, for a fee from the North Rim to the South Rim or South Rim to North Rim. And then you can hike the canyon, which is about 24, 25 miles. Or you can break the bike down and put it on your back and actually carry it into the canyon and back up, which a lot of people do. That ain't me. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. So I had my yeah. <laughs> so I had my bike shuttled around mainly because I hadn't hiked since I got off the AT in July in 2016. So I was like, you know what? Nah, I need to get I need to do some hiking. And man, when I was in that canyon, it's being connected back to the trail, um, being in my own head, I started having a lot of different thoughts about what I was doing, where I was going with things, what I wanted to continue to do. And my love for hiking, my love for the trail was kind of reborn. And then not only did that happen, I made the decision when I was in the canyon, when I get off of this trail, when I finish up with the Arizona trail, I'm going to go back to Albuquerque. I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the time. I'm going to buy a camera, a nice camera, um, a good mic, and I'm going to commit to making one video every, every week, every single week. And I picked Thursday. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> so, Dude, that's so crazy. Yeah. So what happened was I was coming up the the South Canyon Wall, and I stepped. I was a mile, about a mile, mile and a half from the top, and I stepped off a rock the wrong, wrong way, and I tore my meniscus in my right knee. So I ended up having to get off the trail. And when I, I decided that when I got back to Albuquerque, I was going to take the money that I had saved for the rest of that ride. And I was going to invest it in getting that camera, getting a tripod. And that's when all this started. So I've always looked at it as the Arizona Trail is what gave me the gift that I now have of being able to share media with people and being able to stay committed to it. So instantly my focus went to, oh, if I'm going to tell a story, I want to talk about the Arizona Trail because I have a personal connection with right, it. Right, right. So I want to talk about other people's personal connections with it. I want to talk about Dale Shewalter, who was the founder, the man who envisioned it. Um, I want to talk about the communities that surround it, everything that encompasses this amazing little 800-mile trail. <laughs> so um, the beginning of this year, or well, we're into a new year, the beginning <laughs> of 2019 um, in February, I started production on a documentary film about the Arizona Trail. And... In, God, a little over a month, I premiered that film in Flagstaff, Arizona. Which is um, freaking awesome, dude. I wish yeah, I lived down yeah. there. Like, I, I, it would be so cool because just, just for, um, just for reference, a few weeks ago, I went to a skiing film here in, in Burlington because obviously yeah. skiing is huge here. And the whole time I was sitting in this theater and I was just thinking like, man, like I love skiing, but... Oh, if this was a hiking film, it'd be like even cooler. And so like, I wish I could be down there in Flagstaff. That sounds like so awesome. That's going to be, yeah, that's going to be sweet, man. Yeah. It, it's been an amazing year. You know, what I really wanted to do for 2019 was not just do that. My whole goal for 2019 was I've spent four years kind of in my own bubble. You know, I, I make a video, I do a hike, I make a video, I do a hike and I'm by myself. I'm, you know, obviously there's a lot of people watching it, but I'm always, doing things by myself sure, sure. in my own little world. So I made it a point for 2019 to really be about 
collaborating with other people and creating things with other people. So the film is an example of that. I partnered with the Arizona Trail Association. Um, you know, they were a massive help in giving me tons of archival um, information, uh, photos, video, uh, spending a lot of time with them, interviewing certain people that, that played vital parts uh, in the trail's development. And then I also decided to partner with um, a couple other hikers that I've worked with throughout the year to help me film. Um, and then I also ended up partnering with a handful of small cottage companies that kind of make up the long distance hiking community. So I really wanted it to be a big community project and kind of collaborate with everybody to do this thing, to create a story and give something back to the hiking community because massive um, amount of the proceeds are going to the Arizona Trust Association. So the premier, a good example, uh, 100% of the proceeds from the premier are going to the ATA. Um, whenever we release the film online, 50% of every download will go to the ATA. So it was, by the way, the ATA is the Arizona Trail Association. It's, which is weird because you would think the ATA would be like the AT, but totally <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I confuse the hell out of people every time I say that. Um, and then, you know, also doing a lot of other trips, creating media. I've done a bunch of collaborations and YouTube videos this year. So that's really what 2019 was about for me. And then to be able to stop and look at the end of the year, which we've now surpassed, to look at, okay, do I want to continue to make media about me and film me and talk about me? Or do I want to make it about other people? Right, and right. That's where I'm at. I mean, I, I love being able to use again, the platform that everyone's helped me create um, by just following me and watching my stuff and and supporting me over the last five years. But I want to use that platform to shine that light on other people of and course, create man. something bigger. Because to me, that's what long distance hiking is all about. I mean, the hiking's great. The mountains are beautiful. Um, but it's it's the it's the people. It's it's the community that makes long distance hiking so amazing. It's what made me fall in love with it back in fifteen, and it's why I'm still in love with it today. So anything I can do to support that community and help that community, that's that's always my number one goal. Of course, man. Of course. So as someone who just recently started YouTube and is kind of getting the hang of things when it comes to yeah. like editing and and filming and all that stuff. Like, there's a huge difference between making the, like, top 10, like, backpacks for whatever videos yeah. on YouTube and making, like, a a film about a trail and, you know, yeah. having all these, of work. <laughs> all these different aspects. So, I'm just curious. So, you, you decide to create this film. Like, yeah. you, you, you've made up your mind there. What is, like, step one for making that happen? Like, what's the first thing, like, the first actionable item that you did? Like, uh, like, yeah, when, when you started producing well, this film. The first actionable item that I did was before I talked to anybody else, before I even pitched the idea to anybody. Because, um, you know, obviously making a film, especially something that takes a year to make, requires a budget. Um, and, you know, I didn't necessarily have the money to fund a big project like that. Mm. So I would obviously have to reach out to get some people to support the film. Um, but the number one action was I wanted to make sure that I got involved with the association. I didn't want to make something for the wrong reasons. So of I didn't course. want to, I didn't want to make a film and have everybody think that I was making it just to make a book off of something mm -hmm. of telling a story. I know that sounds weird, but like, I think that there's a lot of times that people here, here you go. I use the term YouTubers get <laughs> blamed or get dude or, or get called I, out. My for, channel's not even monetized yet, and I already get people fucking yeah. saying like, "Oh, you're yeah, just you trying them. to make money." I'm like, <laughs> bro, like you don't even know. Like, yeah, yeah, right, I, right. I feel you there. <laughs> um, so you know, I, there's already that, and there's a lot of people that think that you know, people that have the wrong idea, I guess, of what a lot of people do, and not that's not to say that there's not people out there that are doing it for the wrong reasons, but you know. My reason has always been because I want to share things with people. As I told you, I'm I'm a renaissance man. Like I've done a lot. I had multiple <laughs> careers. I could make a lot more money <laughs> and it would be a lot easier if I just went and done one of the things that I'm I'm pretty good at doing. Of course. So doing the videos, doing everything for me has always been a way for me to, to give back to the thing that gave me so much. When I went out on the AT in 2015, 
I was nothing like I am today. I was very, um, so I'm trying to use a, a descriptive word without making me sound like a, a jerk. Um, <laughs> I was really surly on a lot of things. I had a really kind of um, negative worldview. I, I kind of thought that, you know, there's a lot of crappy people out in the world and I didn't trust anybody. And I wasn't 100% that friendly. I was more about me. And that's why I think, and why a lot of people go out to do something like the AT, you're like, oh, I want to go get lost in the woods for months on end and be by myself. And what you discover is A, that doesn't happen. B, the best part about it is the community. So because it gave me such a massive gift, I've always looked at everything that I do from taking a photo to making a silly YouTube video to doing this podcast as a way for me to try to repay this debt to a community and to a, a thing that has given me so much, especially over the last five years. Mm -hmm. So going to do the film, I knew a, I was going to have to, I was going to have to get people to support the film and sponsor the film. If I was going to get it paid for B I knew that by doing that, I was going to get a lot of shit for it because keep in mind that I have spent five years telling everybody that I refuse to take sponsorships. <laughs> and that's still true. I don't take sponsorships. I don't, I, I won't even take something in trade. Like if someone's like, Hey man, I'll give you this tent. If you review it, I'm like, no, nah, that's not really how I do things. If you want to send it to me, that's fine. But it doesn't guarantee that I'll ever even talk about it. Ever even of take course, a picture, of even course. use it. I might just give it away if somebody gives it to me. And, you know, about 90% of the time that works out for me. Other 10% of the time, people tell me to screw off and that's fine because <laughs> um, I like playing by my own rules. Right? Of course. So I knew that I was going to get a lot of crap for it. I knew it was going to happen. Dude, so I number... think that's such nonsense though because like – It is. Just, but, I mean, what are you going to do? As someone who creates content and as someone who does not – I mean, I make a – I have a I get a little bit of money just from Patreon, but it all goes towards like hosting and stuff. So as someone sure. who really like practically speaking, doesn't make any money from this stuff, like yeah, yeah. I don't see any problem with someone like if you're if you're working, like if you're entertaining people, if you're helping people, I don't think that uh, that getting paid for it is necessarily a bad thing. So I not to cut you it, off too it, much there, but I, I just I hate it when people give like creators yeah. shit for well, that. Man. I, I think, it, it I really think that there's me. two different ways about it, right? Like a like I'll have the person that will comment on a video or something. And being like, oh, I wish I had time to hike. I have to pay my bills and 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 give back to the economy. Like, dude, you have no clue how much I work. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I work more now doing the thing that I like doing than I've ever worked, even owning a business. I owned a restaurant for eight years. And I, I work more now than I did owning a restaurant. So <laughs> anyone out there that's ever owned or worked in a restaurant knows how insane of a oh, statement yeah. that is because – you own a restaurant, you got to give your whole life to it. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's silly. You know, for me, I've, I've never I've never taken sponsorships or money for anything for two reasons. One, I never wanted it to sway my opinion on something. And I always wanted to be as honest as possible with whatever I said and whatever I do. Um, and two or B, I can't remember what I said last time. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I started doing this, quote, unquote, full time. Because I found a way to not work for somebody. I found a way to play by my own rules and not have to answer to anybody. So, like, why would I ever take a sponsorship so someone can tell me what to use and what to do? And what yeah, to say? man. Like, I have no desire in doing that at all. <laughs> um, so, the number one thing that I w went to do to make sure that my heart was in the right place and people understood what my my whole idea for it was, is I reached out to the Arizona Trail Association. I actually sent a, a email to the president, Matt Nelson, and I said, hey, Matt, you don't know me. I don't know you. Um, I wanted to let you know that starting in February, um, I'm going to come out and I'm going to make a film about the trail. Um, I'm going to totally tell the history of the trail. I want to put a highlight on all the work that you guys do to maintain it and build it. And when I release it, um, I want to give at least half of every penny that's made off the film back to the association. Mm -hmm. Whether you guys want to support it or not, whether you answer this email or not, just know that you will eventually get a check in the mail from me <laughs> uh, because it's what I want to do. And it could have went two ways, right? Like he could have not responded because he's super busy. 
or what, you know, he got back to me. He said, absolutely. Like we 100% support what you're doing. Anything that you need, let us know. So that was number one. I wanted to make sure that I got the association on board because I wanted to do it right. I wanted to, I wanted to do it for them. You know, it's really a gift for for them, it's it's this thing that, that it's got an amazing story. The association and Dale Shewalter and how it became into into existence has a really cool story. So that was number one. Number two was I reached out to some hikers and I said, "Hey, um, I got the association on board. I'm going to go out and make a film. Do you want to grab a camera and come out and help me film some stuff?" <laughs> and yeah, you know that happened. <laughs> so then the next logical step was, all right, well, I can't afford to fund a project like this. So it's time to reach out to some random companies. Companies for you know the last five years have been trying to sponsor me and give me money to say things on camera. And I won't do it. I always tell them no. Um, so I was like, this is a way that I think that I can kind of take that offer and twist it in a different way. Twist it in my in a way for good. So I contacted a handful of companies and I said, Hey, I'm going to go out and make this. Um, it's for a nonprofit organization. Um, I want to tell the story of this trail. Um, film's not about me, has nothing to do with me. I'm not going to make a ton of media on it. Just my regular videos. If I hike the trail, um, do you want to throw some money at this project? Um, I can't guarantee you that it'll be good. I can't guarantee <laughs> you that, um, your products or your company will be featured a lot in it. Uh, but would you like to support this thing that I'm trying to do? And yeah, they did. Which is awesome. Um, which was amazing. Yeah. And like, I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that, you know, this association, uh, these other hikers and these companies could see the project that I was trying to do realize that like we could all make this community thing together and give back, you know, the long distance, there's a lot of companies and a lot of hikers, you know, me included, they get like a bunch of guff. Like people just don't like stuff. Like I don't like hyperlight mountain gear. I don't like <laughs> Z packs, whatever, whatever. But the reality of it is like all of us kind of create this ecosystem of the trail community, right? Like hikers can't hike the trail without the association building it and maintaining it. Um, hikers want to need backpacks and need tents and need these things that these cottage companies, like I always say cottage companies, cause I'm a big supporter of, of cottage companies because a lot of the cottage gear companies were started by hikers. They were started by people that wanted to make gear for themselves and their friends. And I think that that's super cool. It, it keeps it homegrown. And and their gear is usually just better too. Like in my yeah. opinion, at I mean, least. I think that that's subjective. I mean, I, I, you know, one thing that you'll hear me say a lot in videos and stuff is like, I don't think there's any like perfect gear or anything like that. But for me, it's, it's more, it's more like, I know, like I can, pick up a phone and I can have a conversation with the dude who's making my backpack. And to me, that's super cool. That's homegrown. That's what the, the community is all about. So because we are this big ecosystem of hikers use the gear on the trail that the association maintains, that's what I wanted the film to, to, to be. I wanted it to be this big collaboration between what I consider the community, like every aspect of the community. And yeah, luckily I, got away with it <laughs> they all, yeah man everybody was like yeah let's do it so yeah that's where we're at man yeah. yeah dude that's that's so cool so so honestly dude hearing you like talk about this film and, and even some of the behind the scenes stuff kind of the inspiration behind the film mm -hmm. is like really really cool and i almost like maybe maybe i'm wrong here but i feel like it's got to have like something to do with the with the outdoor evolution thing too as well did, did those two things kind of come up together and um, what's the what's the relationship there yeah so you know that's one thing i kind of left out of the story not only did i decide to go make a film and like launch into this big project i also launched a uh, a media company and an online community website at the exact same time that we started production <laughs> uh, actually the website launched like the first week of february we went into production on the film the last week of february so you know, putting out the film, I wanted to make sure, uh, not that I'm not proud of it or I'm trying to run away from it, but I wanted to make sure that it was about what the film's about. And it wasn't about me and it wasn't people, 
you know, kind of obsessing over like, oh, it's going to be about Darwin and it's going to be about his hike and he's going to hike the Arizona Trail. It's going to be a film about that. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, let me throw that out on Front Street. Anybody that's hoping to come watch all of my Arizona Trail through hike videos all lumped into one and me calling it a documentary, that's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that. Um, but um, I wanted to make sure that it it went under something else that wasn't Darwin presents through the great Southwest that it had a name attached to it. And that name meant something for what I was going to do going forward. So we launched a, a media company. I, I say media company, but I use that term really loosely. Um, as, aside from, um, we make media. <laughs> um, I don't know how much company is involved in it, but, uh, so, we launched this site called uh, Outdoor Evolution. Uh, it's theoutdoorevolution.com. And a little tongue-in-cheek like, you know, the revolution, the outdoor revolution. <laughs> so um, we launched it because not only did I want to create this film to put a spotlight on something else, but for the last five years, you know, being out on so many trails and being connected to the community, as you know, there are so many amazing creative people in the long distance hiking community from photographers to people that are writing books, doing blogs, people that are podcasting like yourself. There's a ton of people that what, you know, I, I've always found that the, the trail is really great for bringing out people's creativity. I mean, a good example is me. I never thought in a million years I was gonna turn a camera on and sit in front of Dude, it and talk. Dude, I, I can't agree more, honestly. Like right? my, my regular listeners have heard this before, but like I don't know if I would have started this podcast if I hadn't yeah. like thought of the idea and committed to the idea while I was literally in the middle of a three hike. Exactly, like, so and that, I totally that, feel you there. That tells you right there that like that's yet another gift that the trail gives you, like. It, it gives you a lot of gifts. It can totally change your perspective. But I think one of the biggest things it does is it takes people and it brings their creativity out. Now, whether that's out of boredom of hiking <laughs> and doing the same thing for six months <laughs> or whether it's just it it inspires you. And Dude, I almost feel like passion. it's just from, from being deprived of the opportunity because like – you know, yeah. I was in college and I was busy and stuff, but I mean, I had access to a computer. Hell, I had access to the entire Adobe suite for free, like oh, because nice. of my because of Damn, being I a student and stuff. <laughs> Dude, I know, right? And 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 so like I had like access to all this stuff, but it wasn't until I was like in the middle of the woods, you know, on month two that I was like finally able to make myself commit to actually like wanting to 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 start something like this so i don't know i don't know I, I i at least for me anyways like being deprived of the ability to be creative like that i think yeah. almost like spurred even more creativity if if that makes sense yeah that's a great point i think that you know it, it it's amazing what it can do to your whole thought process it can make you think about you know what you really need in life it can make you think about money family relationships but I also think it just it just inherently brings out this creativity. So because I've met so many amazing people and maybe they haven't gotten as lucky as I've gotten. And I say that because a lot of people want to be like, oh, your, your YouTube channel is really successful because you're really good at it. Not really. Like I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's got nothing to do with like talent. Like I just point a camera at myself and talk about backpacks. Like that's not a I talent. Think you're, I think you're being <laughs> modest. I think you're being modest. So, you know, because there's so many people that don't have that platform, I wanted to create a space online, a website to highlight those people, to write articles about, to give a soapbox, to be able to be like, yeah, I, I know I, I appreciate that you all like me and you guys want to watch me hike and hear me talk about my thoughts, but check this person out. Like, look at what they're doing. How mm -hmm. amazing is this? So that's where Outdoor Revolution was born out of. I wanted to create a website that, A, allowed people to collaborate with me and post things. And it's let's put a spotlight on something else that's cool in the community that's not just me and my opinions. And B... Um, as a resource for anybody else that was kind of searching and looking at going into what I've done as being a creator, you know, being inspired to get out and create something and kind of turn it into a passion. So, you know, our big, our big thing on outdoor evolution, as you'll see it as soon as you land on the main page is explore, create, inspire. Like those are my three main things that I kind of live by. So I wanted to make sure that 
I had this space to be able to do that that was separate from my own personal opinions, my own personal hikes and all that that Darwin on the trail has become. Mm -hmm. So that's really where Outdoor Evolution was. Plus, again, like releasing the film, I wanted to have a way to, to do that and it not just be directly attached to me. So if the film, you know, goes on and lives a life without me, which I hope that it does, I hope that to give it actually... Um, I just told Matt Nelson today, the director of the Arizona Trail Association, my plan is to eventually just give it to the association 100% mm -hmm. for them to do with it whatever they want to, whether they want to sell it, use it as educational, uh, whatever they want to do with it, I want to give it to them as a gift. So that's that's basically where, where OE was, was built out of, um, is keeping that as my main driving force with, with everything that I want to continue to do. Right. right. The, my own personal thoughts and Darwin on the trail, get in the way of that. Um, and a way to also help associations. So recently we started collaborating with uh, a handful of companies, um, that we started doing limited release, um, collaboration project, co-branded products. So, we did a beanie, um, a 100% alpaca beanie with Appalachian Gear Company. Uh, that is a small cottage company that makes all their stuff out of alpaca wool. Um, we did 50. We, we did only 50 of them. And instead of having their logo on it, it has the Outdoor Evolution logo on there. And then we used a bunch of the proceeds from those sales to give back to the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. Nice. So, yeah. So... It's it's me wanting to do projects like that with hopefully not having all the you know if I do that as Darwin on Darwin on the trail everybody will be like oh you're sponsored yeah yeah so, which I'm not but <laughs> it, it, it gives in case me this, you haven't understood that yet <laughs> based on this gives, conversation it, people still won't listen um, it gives me this outlet to be able to do these other things without kind of putting my own personal media and my own personal beliefs and thoughts and opinions in the way of that so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what that's what the side is, man. Dude, I, I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool. Um, so, be I mean, you, you kind of touched on this a little bit already here, but I, I kind of want to get you to elaborate a little bit more. Once the film is released and, you know, I don't want to say the film is like, quote, done, but you know what I mean? Like once that, that – yeah. You know, the production's done and it's oh, been... Oh, dude, I'm, I'm waiting for it to be done. It's, <laughs> okay, I, it's okay. been a passion project, but it's consumed a year of my life. I got gotcha, you, so. man. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> um, once you... How about this? This is a good way to put it. Once you've moved, moved beyond the film, um, what is the vision for outdoor evolution? Where do you see things going? Um, yeah. Like, can you just talk about, you know... Yeah, you, sure. Like, what's yeah. Gonna, what the future's going to hold for it? Because I, I am just kind of genuinely curious. Yeah. I mean, right now, you know, we're definitely going to continue to still do weekly and bi-weekly media. Um, there for a while, we were doing a week and then sometimes we go to bi -week. We haven't really decided what our publishing schedule is yet. We've been doing it for a year now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's still the plan of continuing to do that. But for me, I want to continue to do projects like the film. I want to continue to um, go out and work with somebody, you know, a nonprofit, like another trail association, like you know, maybe the, the U.S. Forest Service, maybe the National Park Service. Um, that's what I want to continue to do, these, these passion projects to, to help somebody else, to promote something else, to tell another story. So right now I'm working on a handful of ideas and concepts um, of some things that I'm going to be working on. And I might, I might be going to Peru in May to do one of those said projects. Um, nice. that's still, yeah, we're, we're about 90, about 90% sure on that. Cool, um, man. That's cool. Yeah. And we're hoping that a, a small short film can come out of that. So, yeah. So it's just, it's, it's me continuing. Like I, I'm, I overcompensate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I, I'll, I'll do it. If, if somebody's like, Hey, wouldn't this be a good idea? I'll be the first one to throw up my hand and be like, Hey, I'll do that. <laughs> so, um, which sometimes can get me in trouble. I do quite a bit too much sometimes, but that's, you know, as long as I'm still creating, as long as I'm still inspiring someone, whether it's a YouTube video or whether it's a film or whatever it is, like that is my goal. You know, I, I think a big profound thing that happened to me when I was on the PCT in 2018, and I haven't talked a lot about it. I talked loosely, maybe on Emory's podcast. Um, but I've done a lot of stuff in 34 years. Uh, and for a long time I could, you know, 
never really figure out what I was really supposed to do, what made sense for me to do. Um, failed at a lot of things, did a lot of passion projects that didn't, I didn't really see through, um, got involved in a lot of things that ended up not really working out. And for some reason, like the thing that I never anticipated being, being something was creating media and, and what I got out of it, what I learned was even my little goofy YouTube videos were inspiring people. It was getting <laughs> people out on the trail. It was getting people to make that leap and go and pursue something different. Um, and I had this realization on the PCT, and I can tell you exactly where it happened. It was around, around Mount Shasta in California. And I realized, like, I could go two ways. I can keep being some sort of second-rate Kmart celebrity. There it is. And, I was waiting yeah, for it, the Kmart yeah, celebrity joke. Yeah, second-rate <laughs> Kmart celebrity is what I always refer to myself <laughs> as. Um, I could keep doing that and caring about myself and going to get the quote-unquote triple crown and because that was the thought process. Like, oh, I'm doing the PCT now, so when I get off, I have to go do the CDT. Makes sense, Because yes. that's what you do. And I thought, no, that's selfish. That That's for me, but why I like this, what drives me to keep doing it is whenever someone walks up to me, whether it's on trail, whether it's out in public, whether someone sends me an email or leaves a comment on a video of them being like, Hey man, I really appreciate your stuff. Like you got me into hiking. You got me off the couch. I lost some weight because I, I watched one of your videos and I thought it looked fun. I'm going to go hike the PCT next year because I, I saw you do a backpack review. Like mm -hmm. to me, something clicked in my brain and I realized like, oh shit, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, this is my thing. Like, I'm not going to find the cure for cancer. I'm not going to run for president. I'm not going to go land on the moon. I'm not going to change the world that way. It's just not, it's not in the cards for me. But I found that the thing that I can do that somehow changes the world just a little bit is it's just inspiring people. Mm -hmm. And if I can continue to do that, like I'm doing something right. Like I, I have meaning. I've found meaning. And that sounds really deep and maybe goofy to some people because they are just YouTube videos. They are just Instagram photos. They shouldn't mean as much as what they do mean to people, but they do. And I came to that conclusion and I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to it as much as possible and keep doing that until everybody's just like, hey, asshole, I'm tired of hearing you talk about that. Like, I'm going to keep doing it because I get that feedback. I get people that come up to me. And even though I think it's silly whenever someone wants to walk up to me and take a photo with me because, like, I'm the first person that will, like, grab the camera and turn around and take a photo of them. <laughs> like, or talk to them. Like, people will want to come up to me and talk about my hike. Like, I want to talk about their hike. So even though I think it's silly, that means something to somebody for some crazy reason. So I guess that's what my purpose is. I guess that's the thing that Dude. I found that that gives me passion, that inspires me. It's 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 the people that I'm inspiring that inspire me. Without that, like I I wouldn't still be doing it. And so. dude, it's honestly incredible. And you know, we a couple times now we've talked about like sponsorships and this like negative attitude yeah. towards like being compensated for your work. I dude, tell people all the time, and I feel like like it's something that people wouldn't believe because you start thinking about money and stuff like that. If they decided tomorrow to take it all away, to stop, you know, letting people monetize and stop doing affiliate links with Amazon, whatever it is that you know I make a couple bucks off of, I would still do this. I would still do it because my payment is someone telling me. That like, hey, this helped me, uh, you know, this helped me make a decision. This helped me lose weight. This got me off the couch. Um, you're the reason that I'm here. Or like the thing that you said is what gave me inspiration to come do this. And like, that's, that's my payment. That's why I do it. It's not because of the money. The money is making a couple bucks off of it and allowing me to continue to do it. That's just a plus. Like, that's amazing. But even, you know, when I started all of this, whenever it was all going, I still had, you know, multiple jobs. I was working in Albuquerque, still doing it and you know, investing all my money into it because it's just something I believed in. Yeah, it's man. something that's just passion. So. Yeah, dude, that, that resonates with me so much because that's that's yeah. where I'm at right now. And, and 
you know, if if I ever get there, which probably not, honestly, but if I ever do, then no, I, I will don't be. Don't say that, uh, dude. Because look at me. Dude, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. That's true. I'm just <laughs> never in a million years. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, yeah. It's I don't know. It's pretty. It's crazy shit, man. Um, <laughs> with yeah. that said, dude, we're getting towards the end here, and my Have we already my, burned an hour. I know. Isn't it crazy? Whoa. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. So. So my my regular listeners will know I've kind of been on a streak of so so I I always have my guests share like a story at the end of these episodes and I've been on a streak of forgetting to remind my guests that yeah. that's the that's a thing so I always yeah. feel bad like I put them on the spot but I did not forget to remind you I freaking killed it when we talked on Monday so <laughs> so even if you forgot I don't even feel bad like no, yeah, I I've I been... did my part I I asked you to have a story ready so dude Let's uh let's hear it. What you got? Yeah. So um, it, obviously it's going to be a story from the trail, which I would assume that that's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Since it's trail tales. Right? Trail um, tales. That's right. Uh, so <laughs> this is a tale from the trail, um, and it's one that I haven't really talked about a lot. I think I've chatted about it here and there loosely, um, but I, for some reason I just decided, you know, every once in a while there's some there's something that because I do share so much and I make so much media and people get to watch my hikes and stuff like that. Every once in a while, you won't film something. You won't put something because every once in a while, you just want something to be yours, right? So in 2018, I went out to through hike the Penhody Trail, um, which is an amazing trail, by the way. If anybody is thinking about hiking the AT, but you're not really ready to make that commitment yet, go out and do the Penhody. It's 335, 300. 330, 335 miles. Um, it's the uh, it's what should be the start of the AT. It starts at Flag Mountain um, in Alabama, which is technically the first mountain in the Appalachian Mountain chain. And it connects to the Benton Mackay Trail 30 miles south of Springer. So technically, if you really want to hike the Appalachian Mountain chain, you start at Flag Mountain, you hike to Springer, and then you continue, right? So... Mm -hmm. um, I go out to hike it, randomly pick this trail. Now, for years, and a lot of people ask me, like, who are the people who inspire me the most? Who are some of my hiking heroes? Mm -hmm. One man in particular, um, and you might know who he is, some of your listeners might, but a lot of people don't, um, is a man named Nimble Will Nomad. Are you familiar at all? So, dude, I'm... Funny, funny, funny that you brought this up, honestly, because I literally got an email from a listener today asking me to have that dude on the podcast and asking Good me to talk luck. about the Penhody Trail. So, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so you'll never, you'll never get him on one. So I don't ever. really know that much about him, but I literally <laughs> learned about like her that name today. So just coincidence there. So wow. cool. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the trail, man. That's that's right. That means something. <laughs> so. So I've been a big fan of Nimble Will for years. Um, he's an amazing author. He's wrote some amazing, uh, wrote some really amazing books. Um, he's very poetic. He, he wrote a book called 10 Million Steps. Uh, and it's been out for quite a while, but it, it was basically this, this huge trek that he took. Um, and he's done the AT a couple different times. He's the one who basically created the Eastern Continental Trail. Um, he has hiked. If you can think of something, he's hiked it, even down to hiking uh, Route 66. So in 2017, <laughs> he walked. Yeah, he he walked Route 66, um, the entire thing on the pavement because Dude, it was like the last so thing that he crazy. hadn't hiked. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, um, I've always been a massive fan and there it just like precursor a little bit of foreshadowing. There's a poem that he wrote uh, called land of the free. And it's anybody that's ever heard it. It kind of becomes, um, it, it kind of becomes a part of you. It is very, uh, it, the, the whole through hiking lifestyle and the whole, you know, the, the whole, the, the, Everything that encompasses a through hiker and what we're all about, it's kind of like our prayer. It's, it's what you would read if like you knew a through hiker that passed away. It, it's the thing that you would read at their funeral. <laughs> it's, it, it's deep, right? Um, always been a big fan of that. It's always been a big driving force for me. It's always something that sticks in my mind. And if you want to here in a second, I'll recite it. Um, but I got to give my Ooh. story first. Ooh. Yeah, right. So 
we go to start the Pen Penhody Trail, and it was me and a guy that I had met out on the CDT in 2017. His name's Toasted Toad, and uh, Toad, if you're listening right now, I miss you, buddy. That's one um, of the best trail names I've ever heard. Toasted Toad, yeah. He, he's like this 62-year-old man um, that is from up in New England. He's got hardcore, like, uh, he's from Rhode Island, so he's got that hardcore Rhode Island accent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, he's he's... He got a he's got a mouth on him. Um, <laughs> I met him out on the on the CDT in 2017 and hiked a little bit with him through the Gila Wilderness and just had this great experience. So I asked him if he wanted to come to the Penhody with me. Nice. And so we started together. And my wife takes us up to Flag Mountain, and Flag Mountain is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there's nothing around it. So the start of the Penhody is just out there. So she takes us up to Flag Mountain. And there's a really famous uh, water tower that sits on Flag Mountain at the very top. And whenever you research stuff on the Penhody, before I hiked it, there wasn't a lot of information. There wasn't any maps. There was no gut hook. Uh, There's a couple like trip reports that some people had done. So it was really going into a through hike completely blind, no research at all. And that's why I chose it. I wanted to do something that I totally stepped out of my comfort zone on, had no information, and could just experience the trail as it came. So... She takes us to drop us off at Flag Mountain, and you can't get to the water tower. But because you see tons of photos of the water tower, when you type in, like, start of the Penhody Trail, people naturally assume, like, oh, it's a monument sitting on the top of a mountain. That's the start of the Penhody Trail. It's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she takes us and drops us off, and you can't get all the way up to the tower, so she drops us off this road, and she leaves. It's me and Toad out in the middle of nowhere. So we hike up to the water tower, and we've been walking around the tower for ever finding trying to find the start of the damn trail trying to find like the first blaze it's blue blaze it's got like this kind of a uh, baby blue blaze that they, okay, they okay. do the whole trail with um so these are good blue blazes <laughs> <laughs> um so we're looking 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 can't find anything we come down back off the mountain we're walking around these dirt roads these gravel roads we can't find anything about an hour and a half go by and we cannot find the start of this damn trail that we're supposed to be through hiking so finally, we come up on this sign at this end of this gravel road that says uh, Flag Mountain Cabins, caretaker on duty from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'm like, oh, maybe it's the season. Maybe there's a caretaker up there. Let's walk up there and ask the caretaker if they know where the start of the Penhody is. And, you know, toads bitching and being New England, right? Like just <laughs> Whoa, every no. bad, oh yeah, every bad word that come out of his mouth is flying out. <laughs> He's pissed. <laughs> Grumpy old man. I can picture so, the accent so perfectly. Oh, dude, so good. Yeah, go watch my Penhody videos. There's, there's a lot of people from New England that listen to this podcast, so they're, nice. they're going to appreciate yeah, that. You'll find if you go watch like the first Penhody video, you'll watch us walking around Flag Mountain making jokes that we can't find the start of the trail. <laughs> but what I left out is the story that I'm about to tell. Because it was mine. I didn't want to give it to anybody. So we walk up to the cabins and there's this this little kind of, there's all these cabins that are finished out. You can tell that people run them out and like stay in them for weeks on end and stuff. But it's off season. This is February. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's this one cabin and there's smoke coming out of the chimney. And I was like, that must be where the caretaker's at. So I walk up to the cabin. I poke my head inside of the door because there's no door. These are like dirt floor cabins. Okay, okay. Pop my head into the door, and I don't see anybody, but I know there's fire coming out. So I go, hello? And out of nowhere, there's a voice that goes, hello? <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, hey, I'm. Um, can I bother you for a second? Um, I'm up here. I'm a hiker. I'm trying to find the start of the Penhody Trail. And the voice said, I was waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Which scared the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh okay. And he's like, hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. I was like, all right. So I'm standing there. Still can't see where the hell the voice is coming from. All of a sudden (laughs) there's these, I I noticed there's these two cardboard walls. It looks like a kid's fort up against the corner of Hmm. this room. And this cardboard door opens. It looks like a damn playhouse. (laughs) It opens (laughs) and this old crusty man steps out, big white beard, long hair. And he steps out and he goes, well, hey. And I said, hey, bud, how are you? He's like, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? And I said, well, to be honest, I'm a little frustrated. Um, I came, me and my buddy here, came up here to hike the Penhody Trail and we can't find the start of it. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I I, I figured you'd have that problem. (laughs) 
And I said, I said, yeah. He's like, you were supposed to start yesterday, weren't you? And I said, oh, <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah. And, I, and then it clicked. I'm like, oh, you watch my videos? And I said that it probably sounded kind of cocky, but I was like, oh, you watch my videos? That's fair. And he goes, he goes, nope. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Um, well, well, hey, but I don't want to take up any more of your time, but um, could you tell us where the start of the trail is? <laughs> He's like, well, absolutely, absolutely. So he walks out. And we get outside of the cabin and he just starts talking and he's talking about the history of the place and how long those cabins had been there and whenever Flag Mountain was discovered and, and all this stuff. And I'm thinking like, come on, dude, like, I just want to start this trail. Like, I don't care about this <laughs> stuff. Like, it's interesting, but I don't, I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah. So finally Toad being loud, <laughs> he's just like, Hey bud, look, I know this is my best Toad impression. Hey bud, look, I, I, <laughs> I, I I know all this stuff's very interesting, but we're, we're trying to find the start of the damn trail. If you can show us where the start of the trail is, that, that'd be greatly appreciated. It totally cuts him off, right? I got to hope Toad's listening to this. <laughs> um, you have to share it to him. Yeah, yeah. So he uh, he goes, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. Where are my manners? He's like, if you boys want to jump in the truck, I'll take you to the start of the trail. And we're like, uh, uh, yeah, sure, man. He's like, you done walk past it a ton of times. It's off on the side of a road. And I said, okay. So we get in his old beat up truck and I'm, it's a bucket or it's a bench seat. So he's sitting in the driver's seat. I'm sitting in the middle. Toad's sitting in the passengers. And we start going and Toad being, you know, polite New Englander, he reaches over me with his hand and he's like, he's like, my name's Tom. And, uh, you know, go to shake his hand and, the old gentleman goes to shake his hand with one hand on the wheel, goes to shake his hand, and he goes, my name's Nimblewill. And and he's like, oh, and it just like, my, my brain just like opened up. Mm. And he goes, some people call me Nimblewill Nomad. And I just, it, it didn't register. You know, I've, I've read tons of his poems. I've read his book and I've seen pictures of him, but it never registered. And I was like, oh, holy shit, it's Nimblewill. <laughs> and they start talking and I'm becoming a fanboy. Like I'm sitting there like, oh my God, it's one of my heroes. Like how, you know, like sometimes like I get my aggravated. friend just totally cut off one of my heroes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So we get down to the trail and we get out and he's the sweetest man. He's very, very um, deep. Everything he says, he says with passion, everything like mm -hmm. talking about like the wheels on a truck. He's passionate about it. Right. <laughs> so we get out and, He's like, uh, he, Toad gives him his camera and he takes a picture of us standing at the sign and stuff for Toad. And he's like, I, I got a favor to ask you boys. W would you mind? And I said, no, bud, no, what, whatever you need. <laughs> and he goes, do you boys mind if I hike down a little bit with you? Um, less than a quarter of a mile down the trail, there's a little registry, uh, on a, on a pole and I just want to make sure you boys get signed in properly. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Please start mm. with us. So as we're going down the trail, he's pointing out every tree around us. He's talking about, you know, what this tree is and this tree and that tree is this old. You can tell by the size of it. Very educated human being. Mm -hmm. We get down there. We open up the thing. He's talking about the trail registry and how long the Penhody trail has been there. So he's the caretaker at the cabins up there and he has been for a while. Didn't know that. Didn't know anything about that. So he's talking about the trail. Toad signs into the registry. And once Toad is done signing, Toad turns around and starts talking to him. I sign the registry. And in my comment, because, you know, at least like where you're from, who you are, if you're sure, registered, sure. trail registry, same thing. And it said a comment. And all I wrote in the comment is I put never came back. <laughs> and that's a line from Land of the Free. And I put it in there just kind of as a, a tip of my hat. Right? Yeah, yeah. Shut it. Didn't say anything about it. Go to shake his hand. Tell him thank you for giving us a ride. Didn't want to fanboy out on him. Didn't want to be like, hey, man, I really love your stuff. Didn't want to do that. <laughs> Didn't want to ruin the moment. And as we're about to take off, he goes, I got one more favor to ask you, boys. And I said, yeah, man, absolutely. And he goes, do you mind if I, I say a little something before you take off onto your onto your journey? And I said, no, not at all. And he goes, I have a little prayer that I'd like to send people off on their hike. And I said, yeah, absolutely. And he reaches for my hand. He reaches for Toad's hand. And he bows his head like he's going to say a, like a religious prayer. I was like, oh, boy. And he reads Land of the Free. 
recites it right off wow. verbatim. Oh, dude, it melted my heart. Absolutely melted That's my heart. That's incredible, man. It's the greatest experience I've ever had on a trail. It's the greatest start to a hike that I've ever done. I'm um, talking about it. makes me feel emotional. It's just, oh, it was so good. And when he got done, I thanked him, shook his hand again. And yeah, that's how we started that hike. And it's just like, what a start to 2018 because everything that came out of 2018, I went and did the PCT right after that and being inspired and encouraged to do the film and to go a different direction. Like, I can't help to think that like a lot of that came out of that, like that experience. So, that's Dude, that's so incredible. And, and Darwin... Um, yeah. I, as you were telling that story, I went back to that email that I, I referred to a few minutes ago yeah. and, um, the, uh, the, the guy had sent me a link to, um, Nimble Will's, uh, website. His and website, so yeah. I pulled up the website while you're, you were telling that and there's a story yeah. or excuse me, there's a, there's a picture of him. And yeah. so for most of that story, I was just looking at this picture of this dude and I just yeah. <laughs> hearing you tell that story and like looking at the, the picture of this this freaking dude like i i i I literally felt like i could like see the words coming out of his mouth like right on my monitor here so that was that was that was uh that was very incredible that was an awesome story man yeah so here's the poem for you and all your listeners yes dude let's hear it here's to the hearts of that old lonesome trek to the life of the wonderlust free to all who have gone and have never come back here's a tribute to you and me with our feet in the dirt, where the grit of the earth, heads are riding the heavens overhead, and they won't find a nickel of value or worth when our fortunes are tailored in red. But no richer clan has there ever been known since the times of all ruin and rack than those of us lost to the dust outward blown who have gone and have never come back. Damn. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Deep. I think that's the first poem that's ever been uh, yeah. read on Trail Tales before. I'm happy I got to do it. Lots of firsts today, dude. Dude, that's yeah. that's so incredible. Darwin, I think we're going to kind of wrap it up there, man. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that story. Thank you for sharing the poem. And dude, like Absolutely. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, like this is just kind of a kind of a milestone for Trail Tales and I'm just awesome, so grateful man. for your time, for for everything, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude. I'm th- so jacked that you're doing this. Like keep keep at it. Keep keep inspiring people, keep putting some, some knowledge and some inspiration in some people's ears. That's such an important thing, but definitely, definitely. Um, for everybody listening, thank you so much. Trailtalespod.com. If you want to hear some more, uh, Instagram at trailtalespod. My channel on YouTube is Kyle hates hiking as well. Yeah, that's, that's going to do it. Peace out everybody. See you.